Hello, I'm Ewan with Gamma Sports, and today I'm going to be taking you through the process of stringing tennis racket. All right, so step one in the process for stringing any frame is you need to mount it in your mounting system. Now, I have a six point mounting system here. So, first step is to get these 12 and 6 o'clock supports nice and snug. And then once I do that, I can bring in the shoulders here, get them nice and snug. And then I always just do a quick double check, 12 and 6, and then back to the shoulders. Give the handle a good shake, make sure that's nice and secure. And now I can get started stringing. I have my mains here. Today I'm gonna to be using the Gamma TNT React Pro string, and I'm gonna be stringing on the Gamma 9900 ELS machine. Start my mains here. I'll run the first two through. And I like to, on these blunt ends of the string, I always like to get them snipped at a nice angle so that they slide through the grommets nice and easy. And once I get a little bit of the string out here at an end, I just get those a pull so I have a nice even length on both sides for my mains. All right, so now this racket has six mains down through the throat here. So I'm going to be clamping my first main off at the throat. And then I'm gonna use my starting clamp so that the string doesn't slip here since there's no tension on the string to hold that in place. All right, now there's my first main. And now the mains on any racket are definitely the easiest part. And really the, the main thing that you want to focus on during the mains is that you're applying pressure to the frame evenly. So here I'm going to do three mains on this first side before I go to the other side. And you should never really do more than three at once on a side. There we go. And then I do always string my loose end afterwards. Okay, so I did three on that side. Now I'll come back to the opposite side of the mains. And this time I'll do four. And then from there, I'll just kind of piggyback back and forth until my mains are done. You can see I'm always releasing my base clamp before the string clamp. So that way the string is never slipping through the diamond coated string clamp and getting torn up in there at all. Keeping the string nice and safe. I'm also making sure with each string that I'm getting the string clamp as close as possible to the frame to prevent any tension loss. also important that you try to keep the tension even on both sides. So if I do come to a string or a grommet where I can't get the clamp all the way up to that grommet or the frame, that I try to keep it about the same distance on both sides. Now as I'm coming out here to starting to get to the end of the mains here, it's important to know the string pattern on your racket and which grommets you skip. For me, I'm gonna skip this grommet here. You can 
also see that I've actually changed the direction that my string clamps are facing now that I'm getting towards the outside. I find that the angle of those clamps is more suitable as the frame gets a little bit more bent so that you can keep getting them nice and close to the frame there. This racket has a 16 by 19, yes, 16 by 19 string pattern. So this is my last main. Now, okay, so now I need to tie the knots for my mains. So I know that I'm tying them on one main end from the outside, so that's right here. Now, some people like to actually increase their tension on the last main, as you do lose some tension when you're tying the knot. Uh, but I actually prefer to use a method, which I'll show you here, to try to uh, prevent as best as possible that tension loss, so that you don't need to increase tension. Now, I will take my starting clamp here and I'm just tying uh, a double uh, half hitch knot. So I'm going to actually pull in towards the frame and you'll see the string stretch and you're gonna pick up that slack that's outside the frame here and then pull up and towards the frame. And now you've taken a lot of that slack out. So you're gonna prevent as much tension loss from this knot as possible. And then just go ahead and finish that off there. Hold it up and you can release the clamp. Now again on the other side, towards up and in. I always go with these around and then back through. And a good indication that you've tied this knot properly is that the loose end of the string is pointing up and out of the frame when you're done. And then I'll use my cutters and I'll give those a snip. And that is my mains. So now I can move on to the crosses. Now a lot of people start their crosses with a knot, but I actually like to go in a different method. So I'm going to start actually stringing the second cross here. Now this method does only work if you have a starting clamp. I just prefer it because I do not have to tie a bulky starting knot this way. And it allows me to get a little bit more confidence that I'm getting full tension on this first main here and I'll show you why. So, I strung the second cross, I'm going to come back here and string the first. Again, paying attention that I'm weaving properly. And now I'm going to pull enough string out here that I can reach my tension head, and I can. And then I'm going to use my starting clamp and secure that loose string right there. Now I like to string one ahead, so I'm going to come in and string my third cross before I apply any tension here. And stringing one cross ahead is a great method to use for a couple reasons. It does generally save you some time. It will uh, save the strings from friction burn as well. So you get to save those slick coatings on the string. And it does also allow you to check 
for misweaves in the racket. And of course, you always want to make sure that you're not getting the string tangled and kinking the string before it goes into the grommets. And you can see I push that cross up against my first string with tension here and I can see that I have not gotten any misweaves there. It would stand out if I had. It's a great way to double check with this method. And now with an electronic machine that I'm using, it's also very important that you straighten the crosses while they're being tensioned. Because if you don't, you will get some tension loss. So moving the cross string that you're pulling tension on into position while, actually, while the tension is actually being applied to it is the best way to keep that tension consistent and as close as possible to the reference tension on your machine. I like to weave my crosses by kind of pulling them towards me. A lot of stringers will go the other way and actually kind of use their fingertips to push the string through. Um, this is just the method that I started using when I started stringing, and it's worked for me. Whatever your preference is, whatever works best for you, is what I would recommend using. Now again, especially around these shoulder supports, be careful not to kink or bend the string. Another trick that I use while I'm weaving the crosses to help me save some time is actually when I go through and put this loose cross here too, I'll just leave a short end of the string there. I'll go ahead and pull this cross And that way I can just grab this loose end and I'll actually keep it in my hand as I'm pulling the loose string through and that way it's right there for me when I go to put it in the next grommet. You'd actually be surprised how much time that saves you going through a full racket. Now, another thing that I do is I weave diagonally down through the string bed, and that makes the weaving a little bit easier. If you weave straight across, there's actually less room for you to move the string between the mains. So weaving diagonally makes it the string slide a little bit easier. and also, again, helps to prevent friction burn and save the coatings on the strings. I've done that a couple times now where I haven't gotten to position the string while there's still being tension applied to it. So a good method to use in that case is, as you saw, kind of give the string a push, stretch it out a little bit, and let it get to its reference tension. So 
So just give the string a push up, get it in place, go ahead and clamp. Now it's also important while you're pulling this loose string through to maintain this U-shape. But you also don't just want to hold it down here and pull through because what will happen is you'll wear notches into your mains. So the best method to use is kind of let the string slide freely. You do want to maintain that U-shape, but letting the string kind of slide up towards the crosses that you've already woven a little bit is another great way to help prevent that notching around the throat and to prevent friction burn. So as stringers, we really have three main goals while we're stringing the racket, other than of course getting the racket strung. But beside that, there's three really important things we always have to keep in mind. The first is properly mounting the frame, so preserving the integrity of the racket during the string job. Making sure the frame doesn't warp, bend, or crack. The second is to prevent as much tension loss during the stringing process as possible. So keeping the tension as close as we can to the reference tension on our machine. And lastly, is to preserve the string. So preventing friction burn, especially during the crosses, making sure we're not fraying, notching, or wearing the strings while we're stringing the racket. Those are all very important. And I hope some of the tips that I've shared with you guys are, are gonna be useful for you. So something that happens a lot um, down here when you're getting towards the throat when you're stringing the crosses, you'll notice that the weaving is going to start to get a little bit harder. These shorter main sections down here that don't have crosses through them, they get a little stiffer. It gets a little bit harder to weave through them. And if you can string one ahead through this area, it does help. Um, but if you're stringing out of a reel and not a, a 40 foot pack like I'm using here, you might um, not quite have enough string to keep weaving one ahead through this area. Now it looks like I, I actually will, which is awesome because that makes it easier on me. But if you don't want to go using up all the strings and wasting string, you probably will just need to start stringing one cross at a time through here. And there is kind of a trick, especially using the weaving method that I'm using, where I'm kind of pulling it towards myself. There is a nice trick to help make that easier. So what you can do instead of taking one length of string and weaving it all the way through, to make it easier down here, I can take that one length of string and I can do a couple at a time and then pull the loose end out. And that'll make it much easier to weave through all those strings. All right, so now I'm here on the last cross. All right. Okay, now the string bed is fully strung. There's still some things I need to do. I'm going to unclamp 
this clamp right here and I'm going to move it back up to the top. Now remember, I never pulled tension directly onto the string. I did pull the cross inside of it, which means I have my full reference tension, which for this racket is 57 pounds. I have 57 pounds, hopefully, if I did a good job, on the string, but I only have half of that on this string because I did not pull it directly. So I'm going to pull the string up to full tension, take the starting clamp off, make sure that's all set, and I'm going to clamp. Now I do prefer this method because I can come back afterwards and know that I have that full reference tension on the string as opposed to pulling it against a starting knot where I might be losing some tension. Now of course I still have to knot this string which there is going to be some tension loss involved there as well. But using that trick of kind of pulling out that slack you should be able to eliminate the majority of that tension loss. And again, I just use the same half hitch knot that I used for the mains. Some people prefer Parnell knots or the Pro knot. Uh, this is just the knot that I'm used to. It works really well for me. And now for the final knot. There's already another string going through this grommet and it was a little too difficult for me to just push the string through with my fingers. So I used a, a pair of pliers to kind of help guide that string through. Again, taking my starting clamp. It's important not to pull too hard on the knots because you don't want to snap the string or damage the string that you're tying off on. So you do want to apply, apply a good amount of pressure, but just be careful not to do too much. And then when I go ahead and release this last clamp, always I'm holding up on the string, kind of keeping some pressure there, and then always the base first, and then the string clamp. All right, and now the racket is strung. I just got a snip my loose ends here. Now we're not done quite yet. The last thing that we need to do is take the racket out of this uh, mounting system. Usually give it a good tension test. That feels good. And now we do need to straighten these strings. Even though I went through and uh, kind of straighten them up as I was stringing, you're always going to need to do some straightening at the end. So I always start with the crosses, getting them nice and straight. Just kind of looking down, making sure they're all parallel. All right, and then don't forget about the mains. The mains will bend as well. So let's go and straighten up. It's usually only the three or four outside mains that end up bending. Just give them a double check. So that is how you string a tennis racket. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope, uh, hope you found some helpful tips in there for you. If you did, please like and subscribe for more Gamma content.